Hello there. If you're here, we've been watching you. Ain't that right, guy? <laughs> Let me stop playing with y'all. But it's your girl, Tasha. I'm back for another Saturday Scare video. Ooh, not him coming over here for you. Um, today, we have the Dark Web Horror Stories, Don't Peek, The Woman, and Two Sentence Horror Stories. So, all the people that gave me the suggestions, their names will be listed in the description. Also, with the links to the videos. So, y'all make sure y'all check them out. I'm about to take this off real quick uh, so I can actually see the videos. Yeah. I can't breathe in it, y'all. That shit too close to my head. But there we go. Uh, let me turn the light on. All right. So, yeah. In memory of. So, we're going to get started on these videos. The first one up, again, is called uh, Three Dark Web Horror Stories Animated. So, let's see. What they have in store for us. Let me put that up there. I want to turn my light off. I run my bed again. Oh, child. There we go. All right. Let's see what we got today. Screen. My eyes felt Ooh. heavy uh -huh. and I stared at my bright computer screen. My eyes felt heavy and my fingers trembled nervously with each key press. We'd already been awake for more than five days during which time 28 players had died. Mm. I don't want to die, Lewis typed into the chat. Not I'm not so sure you will. There's only the two of us left. I can't keep this up much longer. Five days ago. Shall the see game hair had seemed so simple. A competition to see who could stay awake the longest and the winner would receive oh, enough I got my camp to last a lifetime. On Freddy and Jason. For someone like myself, it's without a social life nor a job to attend, it was the perfect opportunity. Thirty players had received an invitation, all active participants of an is. international dark web forum. We were just required to fill in some necessary information, including a Bitcoin wallet to where the money would be sent. After clicking submit, I was given a time and a list of simple rules to follow. Number one, both your web camera and microphone must be activated for the entire duration of the competition. Away. Number two, there won't be any bathroom breaks. Plan accordingly. No bathroom breaks, so you gotta Number have three, bottles you're not allowed this. to seek out the physical location of the other contestants. Number four, <laughs> there can only be one winner. As I eagerly awaited for the first bit of excitement I'd seen in months, I stocked up on the necessary supplies, mostly energy drinks, snacks, and a bucket. Once the time of the competition so started, I clicked the provided link. I was faced with a blank screen consisting of 30 names and a chat box. I could gain access to each of the competitor's camera feeds by clicking on their username, but the chat itself was global. I guess no one here speaks English, Insomnia90 said. A few of the participants responded with broken sentences. It seemed that out of the 30 members of the chat, only myself and Insomnia9 were native speakers. Two days went by in the blink of an eye, and seven Two players had already left the game in good. silence. I spent most of my time watching movies and chatting to Insomnia90, who I'd come to know as Lewis. He was a Canadian university student on break, bored out of his mind. Hey, check out the German guy, he's about to pass out, Lewis said. I clicked on his username. It would be the first participant we'd actually see falling asleep. His eyes were already half closed and his body shifted towards the edge of his chair. We chuckled at the guy as we got one step closer to victory. Not long after, his consciousness wandered off the edge and he fell into a deep pit of sleep. Only a second passed before his eyes shot back open in a horrified panic as he clutched his ears and screamed in agony. His body started twitching uncontrollably in all the wrong directions and blood poured from his what nose and ears. Fuck? It looked as if his brain had been scrambled to pieces inside his own head. Within a minute, 
he fell over, Excuse dead, me? his face softly resting on the keyboard. What the f was that? I asked. Is he dead? Lewis replied. Check the Swedish one, I said. Sure enough, he drifted off no more than a minute earlier. Suddenly, his eyes shot open and he seized just like the German had before him. How, Another bro? minute and he just added to the rapidly growing pile of corpses. We warned the others as best we could. Not Only a few care. of them How seemed to get the message, each getting out from their chairs in an attempt at fleeing. Alas, no sooner had they decided to run before they dropped dead on the floor. How, though? Oh, oh god, we're gonna die, aren't we? Lewis said. Can I, I game guess is only this? the winner survives. I typed back. How though y'all at home? Three days passed. During that time, we made numerous attempts at contacting the outside world. Phone calls, emails, messages. They were all blocked. Lewis and I were the only players left, keeping each other awake as we searched in despair for a way out. I already ran out of supplies, so if sleep deprivation didn't get me, dehydration would. Then I noticed that Lewis hadn't spoken in a few minutes. Lewis, no, wake the f I called out to no avail. He had already died. As he left the game, I was declared the winner. 29 people had died and I was gifted an unfathomable amount of cash. Since then, I've been searching for Lewis's family. Even if they weren't close, I want them to know that he was a good person up until the end. I'm so sorry. I wish it had been me. Story two. My dad was the greatest man I ever knew. He never shied away from helping others and always offered an ear when people needed to talk. When he was taken away from us at the young age of 41, it destroyed my family. Last week, I spoke to him again, and now I wish I hadn't. What? I'll be the first to admit, what is happening? the deep web always scared me. I expected uh, some illegal set of websites for drugs, weapons, and human trafficking. In reality, it's little more than a bunch of obscure forums sprinkled with the occasional leaked email password. Every now and then, you might be lucky enough to find a gold nugget in the stream of useless shit. If you're anything like me, you might even enjoy the futile search. The one time I actually stumbled across something worthwhile, it scarred me for life. Mm -hmm. It was a page called Mortex, a forum with thousands of active users, all seeming to search for specific people. Looking for Jack Glover, 1956 to 2003, passed from pancreatic what cancer, you mean, looking for the day. top thread said. It was an odd task, searching for someone that had died so long ago. I presumed they were distant relatives looking for a gravestone. But once I browsed through the comments, it piqued my curiosity. It was odd searching for someone that had died so long ago. I figured they were trying to find a lost family member's grave this or something. This already sound like bullshit. Another thread Not read, bullshit, but like, I'm not doing Oh my doing god, this. Hannah, I can't believe you found me. How if they At that did? moment, I figured it was some sort of roleplay forum. Each thread followed the same formula, someone seeking to speak with lost loved ones. Despite my instinct saying it was all make-believe, I decided to post my own search. Looking for Clark Henderson, 1969 to 2010, passed from cardiac arrest. That was the name of my dad. He was the one person I'd give anything to see again after he yeah, unexpectedly died from a heart attack. To my surprise, I only had to wait a couple of minutes before someone left a comment. Henry? It said, along with a voice chat invitation. That's so creepy, bro. My hands bro, like shook how? so much that I could barely navigate the menu. Before long, I was connected, and an all-too-familiar voice called my name. Henry, it's really you, isn't it? It was bullshit. It had to be. 
yet the voice I heard clearly belonged to my dead father. Dad, how is this- How? I stopped, dead in my tracks. I love you so much, Henry, and I'm sorry for leaving you. I should have gotten my heart checked, but I just didn't know. I felt fine up till the moment I died. It's not your fault, but but how do I know this is real? How do I know it's really you? When you were three, you attempted to make dinner. You didn't know about the concept of pots and pans, so you just threw the vegetables directly on the stove. <laughs> he chuckled, cutting the story short. Right, just as I'd forgotten about that, I said. You almost burned the house down, he continued. I've tried well, to tell people this story before, but you made me swear an oath of secrecy. I felt myself tearing up just by the sound of his voice. Unfortunately, curiosity overwhelmed my sense of nostalgia. I have so many questions, I don't even know where to begin. I said as a thousand thoughts ran through my mind. Then it hit me. The situation didn't just entail my personal quarrels with life. No, it was so much bigger. I could ask any question about what came after death. After much contemplation, I finally landed on a simple Child. yet horrifying question. Dad, where are you? I asked. Henry, please, don't. He trailed off. Don't what? I replied. They don't like it when you ask. I can't. They'll... He froze. I should have stopped Who them there, where, where? but I couldn't. I just need to know what comes after, please, I said. My dad paused. Henry, I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I asked. Heaven, hell, it's not real. This place, whatever it is, it's not what I thought. We're just spare parts waiting to be. Our voice channel cut out, and my dad's voice Excuse vanished. Me? I tried to call him back. I tried to message. How do you even I even call a dead attempted person? to make a new thread, but he was just gone. Before I spoke to him, I was never afraid of death. Now that I've heard the fear in the voice of my dead father, I'm terrified. So. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to give me your name. So, not us. Y'all seen the ad for an exorcism podcast web thing? I'm tired. This is why people be getting bodied. Child, that last story, there's no way I feel like you could get on the dark web and talk to a dead person and that'd be legit. And then, like, like they in purgatory jail. Like, yo, your call cannot be completed as that anymore. Like, how? Child, story three. When people want, people want digital footprints to be scoured away clean and then replaced by other preferable images, that's when I get the call. I was once hired by an oil sheik to replace several faces on an embassy security feed to hide their involvement in the assassination of a journalist. Remember the two women who contaminated and killed the North Korean madman's half-brother in the airport? Those women were originally a pair of North Korean goons, but I removed them and set up that pair of Lady Stooges to take the fall. My ethics are porous, and my greed is insatiable. In October of last year, I was hired to deepfake some footage. A black ops team had infiltrated a top-secret lab in China and stolen some highly virulent bioweapon. The lab itself wasn't the problem. The team consisted of professional ghosts, entering and exiting like invisible ninjas, not a trace left behind in the lab's hardwired net. But then, the team leader did something so stupid, so outside his mission scope, that I was brought in for damage control before any possible leaks caused a tsunami of geopolitical fallout. He met in Shanghai the following day at the Ritz-Carlton with somebody well known in the world of presidential politics. This figure, traveling under the name Randall Mariani, 
is a former NYC mayor who now pursues shadow diplomacy for the current administration. Anyway, this guy was caught on security cameras in the lobby exchanging envelopes with the leader of the infiltration team. I was hired that night by a shell company operating out of the Cayman Islands that goes this by the name should be so of Deluxe like, Deepfake.com. No they think you're gonna sneak you They dead. wanted every piece of digital evidence tying these two people together to be deepfaked, replacing the former NYC mayor with the son of the president's political opponent in the upcoming wow. election. It left a bad taste in my mouth, but the money being thrown at me was enough to buy mouthwash in industrial sized drums. However, Why that money never came wash? through because the moment I finished my deep fake, left a bad taste in my your mouth? computer suddenly fried from motherboard to monitor dead. Then the power to my house was cut. <laughs> then oh. the guys in black, those same invisible ninjas that hit the Chinese lab came busting through my windows. I'm alive because I work in a basement with an escape hatch. I snuck away. I guess at least you weren't done. Now I live day by day, constantly looking over my shoulder. Coronavirus is think? spreading throughout the world. Someday, I'll get back online and reverse my deep fake. The world needs to know. What? What is this video saying? Like, is somebody trying to say that, like, U.S. people stole coronavirus and started it? And they was trying to cover their chat? Thanks for watching. Child, I'm tired. Like, the shit ain't far-fetched, but I'm like, who really gonna put that in the video like this, though? Okay, Edward Snowden Jr. on the run. Child, I came with this. We gonna move to the next video because that shit right there. Next video is called Don't Peek. Let's see what this is about. The shenanigans in these these. She on the switch. That's me when Animal Crossing first came out. Oh, and that's what she playing. <laughs> that was exactly me on that beach. I don't play like that no more though. Who got time for this? Excuse me? Not making the switch like it's demonic. What what is happening? Oh, she think this shit funny. Okay, got it. <laughs> so your ass get clapped. Nintendo ain't doing all that. The audacity of some of this shit. Now, what? some of your game that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> now they laughing like that.
Child, ain't nobody got time for this. How y'all turn the switch and Animal Crossing into some demonic ass shit, bro? People just ain't got nothing else to do. Girl, your character probably did. You ain't even turn it off. Like, you just gonna put it down there like the shit's still not on. Get on the switch and play Minecraft so Steve can jump in and just pickaxe my floor. The name of the shit says don't peek. Girl, he gonna be right behind you. Now will you let me out of what, bitch? Bye. This dumb bitch said no. This dumb bitch said no. It was in your room. What the fuck? What making you think no was gonna help you? Like, what? Y'all, I'm y'all about to miss me with this whole mm -hmm, get ass. Come on, no. What that's gonna do? Not don't peek, I'm shy. Yep, you better say it. Oh. <laughs> what did she click? She probably clicked yeah this time. show what she chose, bruh. I don't like this angle. I don't like this angle, so I'm gonna snatch her ass out this window. Mm -mm. gonna say don't peek bitch you looking at me child I ain't got time now they slide the switch back out Playing. They done made the switch dangerous. <laughs> like how y'all, how you get a demon in your switch, bro? Child, people out here putting demons in the game and console. I don't want no parts. Um, let me see. I thought I was gonna have time for two more videos, but I'm only gonna have time for one. So I'm gonna pick whichever one is the shortest and go with that. And I'll do the next one next time. So the last video we're gonna do today is the woman animated. So let's see what this is. It was a late, moonless, snowy night. I heard the chilling cry of a bobcat as I arrived home from my parents' house 
where we had just had Thanksgiving dinner in northern in Michigan. My neighbor's Exhausted, away. I had finally made it to my bed when my pregnant girlfriend asked for nacho cheese famous. munchies. Reluctantly, I laced up my boots and went to my car. Due to the cold, it took me a while to start the car, which only made me more irritated. But eventually, I got it started, and I arrived at the convenience Child, store to retrieve my girlfriend's mandated snacks. As I left the store, walking back towards my car, I saw a shadow of movement out of the corner of my eye. What looked like a person stood near the dumpster, just out of the light. I stepped towards the figure, the and she fuck? looked at me with a giant sinister smile. Her face Not was her so weathered, it like looked like she had cracks all over her face. She was crouched down and appeared to be chewing on something. I looked to see what she was chewing on. Why are you so damn nosy, babe? To my surprise, it was a severed arm. It looked old, as if it had been rotting for weeks. I saw her glance at something in her pocket. I could see the outline of what looked like a pocket knife. As soon as I looked back yeah, up, she, get that she fresh quickly on. charged me. I pushed her away and then ran back to the convenience store. I burst through the door and frantically yelled towards the cashier to call the police as I turned to lock it. He asked me, What's going on? I scowled at him and said, Please, just call the cops. I looked back outside and saw the woman had moved across the street and was still scrutinizing me as she maintained her malevolent grin. Look, there's a girl out there who's trying to kill me. Looking over me, he replied, I don't see anyone out there, sir. Those words shook me, even to this day. When the police reached the gas station, they began looking around for the woman while one of the officers Child. asked me what had happened and I told him the details of the encounter. One of the officers came back and said he couldn't find anything. I then took them back to where I first noticed her. We spent a few minutes intently searching, but there was no proof she was ever even there. The officer oh, okay. cocked his head and looked at me as if I was deranged and asked me in a judgmental tone, Are you feeling okay? I was about to defend myself and then I started to think. I am tired, and I have had a couple of drinks, so I just told him, Yes, sir. Sorry for bothering you. I hope you have a nice night. And then I drove home. I got home at around 4 o'clock in the morning. My girlfriend greeted me with an angered but concerning tone of voice. She asked me, Where were you? Are you okay? So I told her everything that happened. Of course, she didn't believe me. I couldn't get to sleep that night. I sat in my bed questioning my sanity, wondering if it was all even real. Am I crazy? Maybe I'm just tired. But no, that can't be it. I I saw it. But if I saw it, why was there no proof? Where did the arm go? Where did she go? Before I knew it, it was seven in the morning and I had to go to work. Oh, I threw on my jacket as I was about to head to the construction site, and I put my hand in my pocket and noticed that there was a hole in it. It wasn't there the other day. I thought, what if she caught my jacket as I ran? Which further proves my suspicion that she was real. I couldn't believe it. My mind completely went wild until my girlfriend kissed me goodbye. I told my friends at work what had happened, and they didn't believe me either. They made jokes about it the entire day, but I had my bowling tournament that day, so that gave me something to look forward to. I got home and hung my vest and jacket up and rapidly put on my bowling Aww. shoes and got my bowling ball. My girlfriend looked at me with a pleasant smile and said, When will you be back? Probably around 11. <laughs> don't be long. I won't, don't, don't, don't worry. At around 10.30, the tournament had finally finished, and we had won. I was so thrilled I had forgotten about the woman. As we were leaving, I noticed Nothing. something at the other end of the parking lot. It was that psychotic woman. We stared at each other for what felt like an eternity. She slowly started moving towards me while waving her knife in the air and making cuts. 
I quickly jumped into my car and turned it on. As I looked up, I saw she was standing in front of me, staring at me. She slowly walked over to my window, and she said in a quiet, deep, and scratchy voice, Little pig! Little pig! Let me in! Let me in! Oh no. I was frozen in fear, mm -hmm. but I snapped she back to reality now. when she banged on the roof of my car, screaming. I'm good. I quickly slammed my foot on the accelerator and didn't let off it until I couldn't see her anymore. When I arrived home, I told my girlfriend what had happened. Like last time, she didn't believe me. I really thought I was insane, but I tried to forget about it and get some sleep. Later that night, I woke up and saw her in my room. Oh? All she said was let me in, over and over. As Is it a demon closer, trying to possess you? She then started shouting. Let me in, let me in, let me in! Let me in! Paul, stop being difficult. Let me in! I was wondering how in the world my girlfriend hadn't heard this going on. Uh -uh. The woman was right next to me and held up a knife to me. That's when I fainted. I woke <laughs> startled funny, in my room, I didn't think dripping with sweat. Fainted. Then I remembered I don't have a girlfriend, nor a house, or a family. Come on, Paul. Time for your morning meds. Let me in. Child, I'm tired. This child, Lum Ars is wow. Child, what the fuck? I didn't expect that story to end like that. Come on. Uh uh. Bixby voice privacy Shut up, Bixby. I ain't asking you for nothing. Y'all, when I need y'all ass, y'all ain't there. But y'all, that's 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 it for this Halloween episode of Saturday Scares. I'm shook off that last story because he looked like a kid right here, like girlfriend, nor a house or a family. See, they don't even look like the same dude. They look like a kid. So like, them the kind of dreams he have uh, if he not taking his medicine. Like that's scary. I, I don't even know like <laughs> how to feel about that story. But like I said, guys, I thank y'all for hanging in there with me for Saturday scares for the month of October. Um, if this video goes up, um, I will be streaming on Twitch. Um, like some scary movies, Halloween. Um, the old one, like the original one, the newer one, Scream 2, stuff like that. I'll be streaming for like five or six hours if y'all want to stop through. The links will be in the description. Um, also, all the people that sent me these links, their names will be in the description along with the link. So you can check out these amazing horror channels, all the animations and voiceovers that they do and everything else. So with that being said, happy Halloween and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.